Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop, and we have we're gonna have a great time tonight. Yes. Well, whenever whenever you're listening, because we've got the guys from the Pro Audio Suite, Robert Marshall, Darren Robbo Robertson, and Andrew Peters, and George and these guys right. talk yeah. about high tech stuff. So, George, you're gonna get to introduce them, and and then we're gonna talk about that, and then we want your questions because each one of these guys will give us a 20 minute answer. <laughs> this and could then, just turn uh, into yeah, sure. a two-part yeah. show the tech talk is it might all run into one big giant <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. show we'll, we'll just edit it i together. think it will i anyway. think it, it turns will. into an episode of the pro audio suite we're all in trouble uh, yeah <laughs> yes. okay, well, we'll <laughs> anyway. this time this time robo won't edit it <laughs> yeah or me are we ready george are we ready we're ready tame these guys it's time for voiceover <laughs> body shop right now <laughs> VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect, JMC Demos, when quality matters. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voice actor website shouldn't be a pain in the butt. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Wow. And I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of that tonight. Uh, An extra heap and helping. <laughs> I am very, yeah, absolutely. As they used to say in the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, anyway, we've got the Pro Audio Suite with us tonight. And this is a, a podcast that you do on the weeks that we're not doing this. That's right. That's right. We had a little collision this week because of the timing of our having taken off a week for 4th of July. So we it just, we slammed us all in together into, because we were all, we were all scheduled to be here anyway. So we right. figured what the heck this is a perfect time to have the rest of my my other family on the yeah. show and so uh here they are why don't you introduce them all right great well uh from way across the pond representing two of the most well-known well-famous cities of australia we have first robbo uh who's coming in from sydney hey robbo g'day how are you hey. Great, man. Thanks for joining us. And it's great to yeah. see you. You know, when we do the pro audio suite, it is audio only. We don't even see each other when we produce it. So this is actually yeah. kind of disconcerting, a little, a little I unsettling. My, I had to get out of my pajamas this morning. <laughs> and I'm, then I'm glad uh, you put something on then. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> from further down the coast, uh, from our further down the coast, we have Andrew Peters from the Melbourne area. Hi, Andrew. How are you going, mate? Yeah. <laughs> good to see oh, it. he's the voice like a warm cup of coffee uh, <laughs> yes it's the uh, remnants of covid unfortunately yes oh, okay. the covid cave i succumb to it but i'm mm. out yeah horrid. it's like Don't so many it. others yeah. and last and completely least robert marshall from source elements <laughs> that's right like not uh, ne not necessary is robert marshall from source <laughs> our pal robert marshall from source elements Hello. and he is also a studio owner and just quickly and we, uh, we'll get everybody to tell us a little bit but robo is a producer he produces our show produces television radio audio spots um andrew is a voice talent clearly um and robert does all stuff. Sorts of stuff really yeah. everything it, so, the uh, renaissance man we call him the, the renaissance, renaissance man, man. <laughs> yeah exactly he probably paints as well no yes. Robert. actually i'm very bad at that uh, yeah oh, good. he photocopies Excellent. himself yes. on that here that's the only thing that i think when i paint it ends up just all over my hand it's really bad all right don't make Fair me enough. use the gavel <laughs> oh the oh, gavel the gavel oh. tell us about the gavel call it to Who tell yeah what? No, no. This is somebody found this in their attic and said, "Hey, that looks like Dan Leonard." So. <laughs> it does look like it yeah. does. <laughs> I'm going to see what I can find in my attic that looks like Dan Leonard. Actually, two things. I've got to say, Dan. Two things. One, I mentioned the Beverly Hillbillies some episodes back, and everyone sort of like 
what are you talking about? <laughs> so I'm glad you actually, uh, obviously, a man of my vintage and remembers the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, of course. And secondly, I don't know whether you ever saw, I know they did an American version of a TV show called Till Death Us Depart. I think it was called All in the Family. Oh, yes. It would have been back in the yeah. 70s. But the English one uh, starred a uh, an actor called Warren Mitchell. He played a character called Alf Garnet. And I have to say, if you Google Alf Garnet, it's Dan Leonard. Uh, all right. So, so, so that's like the Dan Leonard on the shelf thing. Like, don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dan <Anyway>. Leonard. On- <laughs> so, guys, if I can get some order in this here. Tell us about the Pro Audio Suite. How did you start it, and what goes on? I, I'm getting a sense of what it's like. I had a right prior now. life. I know <laughs> yeah, that we had did. a prior life. Before. We were yeah. we were each guests on your show before. Yeah. Like Which separately, cool. right? And then did the, we somehow end up all together? And it was like, you put your peanut butter in my chocolate. And like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, it was kind of weird because said. I remember we were, Rob and I did a, a podcast called The Voice, uh, uh, the VO Radio Show. And we used to get guests on. And we had George as one guest. We had Robert as another guest. And then it was coming up for a Christmas. And we thought, well, let's do one for Christmas. Why don't we get George and Robert, see, you, know, see what, you know, just for something different? And we did. And we did the show, and then afterwards I called Robbo and said, do you know what, that kind of works. I think, let's see if they're interested in coming and doing it permanently. So that's the short story of how it happened. Mm-hmm. Oh, Robbo. Right. And it's also, but it's also the magic of the show, I reckon. The magic yeah. of the show is, I'm, I'm the sort of, well, Robert as well, but sort of, I'm more the, the, the sort of producer side of things. Robert, while he's also a producer and audio engineer, is also the, the sort of software techie sort of thing. George, with his obvious skills in AP, who spends his life in little rooms behind microphones. So, <laughs> Which is got, great, got, yes. Well, you've got the entire yeah. gamut of the industry, though. You know, Bo- got, both I'm sides of the glass and like the, like the tech support for both yeah. sides of the glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah. yeah, that's, that's an important thing. Now, I, I'm not an audio geek. I mean, from what I understand, you guys get really into detail about stuff and how things are supposed to sound and stuff. I can't define what an audio geek is. How would you guys define it? Well, I can tell you what it isn't, and that's okay, me. Well, that, so we'll move over to somebody okay, else. So, I would <laughs> disagree with that completely. Yeah, I <laughs> really? <laughs> Anybody who's spent as much coin in audio gear as you is an audio geek. Oh, true. Good point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll accept that. Yeah. But I think the ultimate audio geek on our show would have to be, I, I would give the award to, to Robert, for sure. Me? Okay. Yeah, I think so. I agree. Yeah. 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 Hey, Robert, there is no, Robo, no question he can't answer pretty well. Robo, eat your mic a little more, gain you yeah. up. I want to hear you louder. If you am, I, uh, am I mining, am I fa- falling away in the background there? How's that? Yeah, I don't want you to get yeah. stepped up the, up on. The Andrew's a tromping there, all over you. Yeah. There we go. Well, he Perfect. always does that anyway. But that's what I do anyway. I've always done that. <laughs> yeah. <That's>... There's something <laughs> about <laughs> Robo's mic right now that like, no matter how close he gets to it, he doesn't sound like he's super close it to is, it. I'm kind of hearing that too, to be honest with you. But see, that's the NTG Here, for you. Just like bash the front of it. Just go like, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's live. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's me. Okay. Yeah, that's me. Yep. That's is this thing working? Out. 35 years as an audio engineer. Is this thing working? Yeah. Hello? Hello? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you used to love that? You know, yeah. tap, 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 tap. Don't, please don't touch it. Yeah. yeah. But, so let, know, let, anyway. let me toss this out there and, 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 and see what you know comes out the other end. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be very dangerous. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is what will come out the other yeah, end. And that's, yeah. why we're, that's why we're VOBS. <laughs> Each one of you. Tell me what you think are the keys to good audio. For voiceover specifically. And then you can talk about all the other weird crap that you guys talk about. For me, for, for, me, for voiceover, uh, it needs to sound real. It needs to sound natural. I, I uh, greatest respect, I've been an, uh, a ra- doing radio imaging for 35 years now, and the greatest respect to all the radio images out there. But I hear a lot of radio images who produce podcasts and stuff like that, which is a more natural form of audio and obviously very voice driven. And they use the same tricks and effects that they use on voices on radio promos. So they compress the living hell out of it. They EQ the living hell out of it. And to me, that's not natural. To me on a radio promo, absolutely, you need to do that. There's a million reasons we could sit here forever and talk about why, but for a podcast, it's just people sitting, having a chat. I want it to sound natural. I want it to sound easy to listen to. I want it to sound as unaffected as I can. Um, and to <laughs> me, that's the trick. 
that's the biggest trick. Yeah, we were be- just be- talking about because the stuff. radio promo is designed to interrupt and get your attention, and Correct. that's fine. But you don't want an hour of that. Yeah. Essentially, oh, that would yeah. be fatiguing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. can you it imagine a documentary sounding like that? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, hey, I mean, looking Robert. at an elephant. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Robert, you, you're listening. To, Robert, you're listening to that stuff all day because you're producing it. It must be yeah. fatiguing. You must have to be oh, really careful not to yeah. Yeah. run your cans too hot or your monitors too hot. You're, I mean, you're. You're fluctuating the level, and there's and what's funny with uh, you know listening and mixing for TV a lot is that, especially for advertising, there's a lot of time spent just on the small speakers, and yeah. and and like you know so there's not a lot of volume there, and but yeah no it's um it's it's still like very in your face. It depends on exactly what spot you're working on, and um, I'm not working on like car dealership spots all day, so I, but I've certainly done. A number of campaigns where it is just like borderline yelling at people what are you monitoring through robo what am i monitoring through uh, yeah when you're things. editing and mixing and doing all that oh, post. i've got my um can you see them up the back there yeah I can. my beautiful adam adam audio a7x's which uh i purchased just last year in fact and i have oh, that's fallen right. in love with um and uh and also my austrian audio uh i was gonna say a7x and now the name of them's gone out of my head hi um, x65 x65 thank you yeah no worries mate <laughs> but but, but uh, andrew's not a geek <laughs> uh, are also, right. um, they're sort of they've, they've become my bees i i've never mixed in headphones until i had them um and, and um and we had we talked about this on an episode of the show recently i put them on the first time and i hated them i took them straight off and uh, yep. and now and now they're they're my go-to before anything gets mixed out of pro tools throw them on and um and have a listen in that as well so um yeah yeah. right and as a producer of course you're working with multiple tracks and you're really taking the stuff that you know any voice actor is going to send you and you're adding all of the other elements i think a lot of people think well do i have to do that as a voice actor and no you're the guy that's going to be doing all the all the hard work so what do you want when a voice actor sends you a file what do you expect from them Oh, anybody who listens to our show can answer this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> deal deal with the room first. I'm like, yeah, like yeah. First yeah, thing is not you. an echoey room, first thing. Yeah. And then basically a decent type of mic, probably a condenser, but a high-quality dynamic. And make sure you're in front of the stupid mic, close. Um, you know? And I'd say that's the beginning of it. And then after that, it gets into... Uh, the equipment but honestly these days a lot of this equipment is all good and the price range is the price range for a you know a hundred dollar usb interface and the quality it gives is you is, is not as different as you'd think for a thousand the difference between that and a thousand dollar interface for example so yeah. it's it's pretty inexcusable these days to have crappy gear i think yeah it's, it's not like telling people it's like there's no microphone out there that's going to make you perform better you know, you I wonder, you I, yeah. is that true though? Is that true though, Dan? I, I, I think I there's totally a psychological agree. thing. I, I think if someone, if you go into a studio and someone puts a cheap mic in, mic in front of you, it's kind of like, yeah, well, is that you really, is that what I'm worth? Well, <laughs> and if you, if they put up a really, you know, like a, a really good mic, you go, thanks buddy. I mean, I've been into studios where the guys run in, taken down a shotgun and put up, uh, you know, his U87 because right. he wants me to be on the U87. I know it's because it's going to sound better anyway with my voice as opposed to the mic he had in there before, which could have been for somebody else. Right. But psychologically, well, could, you think, oh, yeah, thanks. Uh, you it know, could you be get a placebo my, effect. You thought about me and my voice and what might fit it well. Yeah. yeah, correct. A placebo effect is still an effect, right? Even if it's yeah. not something that's affecting the quality or the product or your acting, it's something... I, men- I think something the opposite can happen. It? I think the opposite can happen. For, for example, Sage was working on a song forever, and she... Um, I just had her set up with like an M box and an old Mac Pro one 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 Mac Pro, and a Audio Technica battery powered condenser. It wasn't was not awesome at all. And she, she gave her the, like really basic entry level mediocre equipment to start. Yeah, with, she was just I writing. Is, she was just writing a song, and it was like yeah. you know she's recording in our living room. The refrigerator's right there, like buzzing away. It wasn't expected oh. to be a good recording. You're and, slipping, Robert. She should be on a train because that's what you would normally do. Yeah, you're right. Uh, she's <laughs> she's really actually upping the quality. I have to, um, but she does these vocals on basically the scratch part of this song, like you know the scratch track, and for the next three months she's chasing that, 
she's yeah, just yeah. like she likes that performance better and she's she redid it like four times at least because it's like there's a certain relaxing like oh shitty mike who cares i'm just gonna kind of do this and you end up not worrying about it so much that you end up doing a really kick-ass take then when yeah. you try to think about it too much you end up breaking it yeah robo <laughs> I was going to throw it back to you two, to, to you, Dan, and, and you, Andrew, because there's, there's a thing as an audio producer slash engineer slash mixer is your brain, your brain is wired that when things are louder, your brain will tell you they sound better, even if they don't. Mm -hmm. um, True. So it's, like, so when, it's like salt. Yeah, it is. Audio salt. <laughs> so so I, I guess the reverse question that, that you posed us, Dan and, and Andrew, would be when you're recording... Are you conscious of how loud your headphones are? Do you notice a difference if you're monitoring lower as you are when, you're, when you've got them loud? I mean, AP's deaf anyway. He probably didn't even hear me ask that question, but maybe Dan did. <laughs> um, well, when I'm recording, unless I'm doing a remote session, I'm not wearing headphones. I listen to myself in the environment in which I'm recording. Yeah, right. yep. And uh, that way, I'm, it's, I'm not affected by it at all. And I, mm -hmm. you know, it's, I find it weird wearing headphones for this, but because of the audio, the way the audio is set up here on StreamYard, I've got to, I got to wear the headphones. But normally, yeah. I just, I just, I just listen to myself as I am, the way I normally hear myself. Sure. And you know, there's people that say, "Well, I've got to hear the mouth clicks, and I got to hear this, and I got to like." Well, it's it's like George's client who's like, who practically needs a foot pedal for his headphone volume. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> we that's won't right. mention any names. Yeah, You're right. No. Just. It's Sorry, right. David K. Yeah. 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 But yeah. not mentioning any name. No. He's a friend of his. You mean a friend of David yeah. K. Yeah. And it's like and, and 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 definitely like some announcers depend depending on the style that you're, you know, working in, if if you're aware of your mic technique and where you are, then you need the headphones to really kind of um feel that feedback if you're playing with the proximity effect. Yeah. Um I know I know that when you're recording singers often it helps to really compress their voice for them in their headphones so that they just kind of hear themselves. It's all in their face. Yeah, yeah. so they have a different feed, a headphone feed, and, and yeah. which right, is yeah, separate, yeah. yeah. See, I, can't, I, can't, I can work without headphones, but I prefer not to because mm. if you, I, I find it like if I'm going to wear headphones some of the time, then I'm going to wear headphones all the time because if I keep changing things, then I get confused as to what, you know, what it's sounding like or whatever. So headphones, 100% for me. What what do you use? Um, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> uh, would be how many mm, pairs of uh, from the, 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 A the yeah. AAs. <laughs> no, I've got the Austrian Audios. I have um, Hyx fifty fives in the booth because they're um, they're closed back, and then I have sixty fives out here. If I'm just, just want to check an edit for whatever reason, I rarely use headphones for an edit. If I can't hear it through speakers, then I don't worry too much. Yeah. And for things like this, I've just got some Audio Technica in ears, which I've got to say are, are great. They're fantastic, especially for like eliminating echo. It's a good trick when if you have like, yeah. those stick it when your ear earplugs. Well, the good thing is if like if also if you're um, out of the the studio, you're traveling and you're recording in a hotel room or you know wherever. It's actually really good to have in ears because it just cancels anything that's being oh, noise in via yeah. the yeah. So I, I should use that hear. next time I'm on a train. Yeah, you would frighten yourself because we know exactly what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're, yeah. Yes. If you're just joining us here on Voice Over Body Shop, you're probably very confused. Uh, but <laughs> not as confused as we are, Dan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it, it's spreading around. Our guests are the guys from the Pro Audio Suite. Uh, George, you're technically not a guest. I mean, these are you yeah. guys. George, what are you? You're confused now. Yeah, yeah. He's That's stuck in not, I'm totally confused. Split personality. Yeah. I was still yeah. wondering about five minutes ago. Are we doing the podcast right now? Because <laughs> yeah. I keep reminding myself we edit the podcast. Right. <laughs> we yeah. don't, have no this, we don't this. edit this show. This yeah. show there's, is, yeah. there's no razor blades. I'm, I'm trying like very this. hard. So is, if if you haven't noticed, <laughs> oh, there are much, razor much blades. Much less Tourette's editing. Yes. <clears throat> <clears throat> anyway, uh, if any of you out there who are watching this very show at this very moment, uh, if you have a question for these guys who know please audio, say. Save us. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Throw it in the chat room. <laughs> and I know Jeff Holman is hiding in there somewhere, and we will get to those questions in our next segment. But uh, but uh, we've got Robert Marshall and, and, and Robbo and, and Andrew Peters who are joining us from the Pro Audio Suite. And, uh, again, you got a question, they'll be happy to answer them. Um, okay. So 
getting back to that sort of subject about, you know, good equipment and, and stuff like that. I mean, mm-hmm. I generally peach, teach and preach, teach and preach, yep. uh, keeping it super duper simple. Yes. And that it's not going to be everything you do on the back end to make yourself sound like you, as I like to say. You know, the idea of a home voiceover studio specifically is not to make you sound great. It's to make you sound like you as you exist in the environment in which you're recording. And as you said earlier on, Robert, it's like the environment means more than anything else. And, you, you know, no, no echo, no exterior noise, those sorts of things. What about some of the, you know, a lot of people use, you know, somebody was like, hey, I need help with my RX-9. It won't install right. And I'm like, why are you using that? Well, mouth clicks and I've got this and I've got that. Well, to me, everything is physical. What do you guys think about all of this modern, you know, filtering uh, software that we have? now? Uh, He's going to start. Yeah, I don't use it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> like, All right. Next question. <laughs> no, Robo. I know Robo uses it. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it's not that I don't use. It. I'm just saying, don't like let let the end person mixing it deal with that. And yeah. and there's yeah. no need to like start trying to process and hide stuff that will be figured out anyways. Yeah. 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 I think I, I I think I can see where you're going, Dan. And I think the answer that you're probably looking for, and the one that we give on the show a lot, is is really make your room sound as good as you can. Um, you know, find, find the right room, talk to guys like George, get yourself set up somewhere where it's going to be the best possible recording you can make. And then as much as possible, just leave it alone. Um, guy, you know, guys like me and Robert, we'll, 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 we've, we've got your back. We'll clean you up. You know, obviously we're not going to send audio to our clients. It's not right. And, and look, you know, in back, even back in analog days and even the days before home studios, we dealt with voiceover artists who had mouth clicks and all the rest of it. It's just a, a part of recording. Um, so, so, you know, as long as you're not popping and, you know, hissing and, and someone's mowing the lawn next door, um, just, just leave it. Leave it yeah. alone and, and send it to us and, and let us deal with it. We've, we've talked about it. At the most, a high-pass filter. Maybe, if it's v- yeah. set very low. <laughs> like Yeah. Yeah. 30 or 50 at the most. Actually, that's really interesting you said about analog, though, Robbo, because I'm just thinking in the days when we were recording on tape mm-hmm. and the edit was done with a splice block and a china giraffe or whatever you call it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you do about <clears throat> mouth clicks and things? How, how did you – did you cut them well, out? I can't remember because I, I, I was never I in production. I don't remember so I don't cutting know. out mouth clicks. We, was no. Yeah, we, had a, we had a compressor that was like a super fast high-frequency compressor – and it was it was originally made for um, taking out pops in vinyl, essentially. Oh, uh, okay. And but honestly, the thing like 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 probably the worst plugins you can think of now. It's like it kind of helped, and if you used it too much, it just made the whole situation worse. And yeah, you know, it's like it could take out the really big stuff. But I mean, now we're chasing down little like like little tiny things yes. that that aren't well, even yes. like spikes above the waveform. Yes. So. Yeah. I mean, and that, and that seems to be an issue with a lot of people. Like, as I was saying, somebody's like, I got to use RX-9 because I take out all this stuff. I take it. But when we talk to each other over a cup of coffee in our kitchen or something, mm-hmm. it's all there. And the only reason that we hear it is because we're, of course, talking a little bit more in proximity to a microphone as opposed to being across a, a table where you're doing yeah. that. Um, but generally, I, I don't know. I, I hear people, they don't do mouth clicks. It's only when they're doing it in voiceover for some reason. And because I, I tend to think that people over project, they tend to overemphasize certain syllables. And, uh, and that, and that, and that happens. To, t- actual vocal technique is far more important than all the other things. As long as you've got the right yeah. environment and you're using your microphone, right. And your levels are right. It really shouldn't matter unless you're yeah. really I mean, I, I, I think that people are clicking away even when they're talking amongst each other. So it's just that yeah. you're in a room and there's background noise and you're six feet away from them and all that. So you're not picking up on the mouth clicks that they... But I think someone who's... And people have clicky days and not clicky days. It depends on yeah. what you ate and how much you drank. And it's like if you were 
how much you drank the night before too well um, I, have, I have a theory too is <laughs> yeah enough. well stress is a part of it stress is a yeah. part of it but but robert and you guys that have recorded actors in legit studio you know commercial studios do you guys work the do you record the actors with a microphone this close no. No traditionally way. like in the you know in the traditional sense you, if, if you're in a good booth you have the freedom to be a more away from the microphone and still have a very direct sound and then you get a more balanced kind of frequency it's not so bassy it's a little bit like you can almost have the same effect by just staying just as close to the mic and putting it in omni and then you would have less proximity and it sounds more natural if depending on the booth that they have but a but lot of the, the trick thing. is you get so close to it to avoid your room that, yeah so yeah. Yeah. all of everybody with voiceover booths that are working in closets and all those little wood boxes we know we all know so well yeah. they, they they're forced to have to almost eat the mic because mm -hmm. they're getting so much room resonance and it's slowly skewing against. and the it's slowly skewing the, mic the aesthetic is, yeah well and the closer the mic is the more the mic is now sensitive to the mouth noise. The mouth mm -hmm. noise may always be there, right. but the closer the mouth, the mouth noise is the same volume, no matter how loud or soft you project, right? It's mechanical. So it's like a, it's like a harpsichord. You can't change the volume of that damn thing. It is, that's the sound, the volume it is, because yep. it's plucking strings, you know? It's like with the mouth noise, it's just mechanical. So now when you're closer to the mic, guess what gets louder? The mouth noise, you know? And, yeah. and that's the challenge. Like. It's harder to record a clean, great sounding voiceover in a really small room with a really close mic. It just, yeah. it is harder. Yep. It's interesting because we, you're talking about like having a conversation in the kitchen, having over coffee, you don't hear clicks and you don't hear anything. It's like walking into a room <clears throat> that's echoey. You don't necessarily, unless it's like a, a you know, a medieval church, <laughs> um, you, you don't hear the echo. But as soon as you record something, put headphones on, you hear it. It's, there, it's there. Well, brain, There's a bizarre thing that happens with your brain. That. That, That's right. When it's yeah, live, your, your, your brain, brain is interpreting and it sees it and it cancels certain things out. It's like right. the other thing that your brain can do amazingly well is if you're standing in a circle of four people and it's a party with a hundred people behind you, right? You can hear all four people and, what, and what's being mm -hmm. said. And then you just take a recording of that pretty much where you were and you play the recording back. And then you can't figure out what the four people are saying as much. The background right. noise seems way yeah. louder and your brain, yeah. because you're not seeing the mouth move. There, there's a million things that just make your brain f there's a, use filters. That, yeah. 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 They yeah. should yeah. do there's that for very, hearing tests now. Go ahead. Go ahead, Robert. There's a very clever, there's a very, well, there's a, a very embarrassing thing that I'm sure every audio engineer who's ever walked to the planet will tell you that they've done is you'll sit there for 20 minutes. EQing a voice or compressing a voice or adding a reverb, <laughs> playing with a reverb. And you'll go, you'll I know go, what you're going to say. My God, that's awesome. And then you'll look up and it's bypassed. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you weren't doing shit the whole It's like you fell for your own producer's knob. It's like it's like the knob on the desk. You're like, can you, can you like do something with that? And you like turn a knob that's not connected to anything. You're like, oh, much better. You're like, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Like, your, brain, your, brain will tell you, your brain will be telling you, my God, that's getting so much better. It's yeah. your brain. Your brain it. is your biggest enemy. When <laughs> this in is audio. the totally. the entire hi-fi stereo market has has based the entire its entire economy on that basically. Yeah, just yeah. about. Yeah. Oh, the illusion. Mean, uh, oh, yeah, audio the file illusion. market. Yeah, the audio file about? market. Exactly. Audio file. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. It's yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Paint your CDs green. Oh, That's I right. definitely hear that. Like thousand dollar power cables. I can sell you one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly, exactly. Speaker cables with electrons that follow yeah. traffic directions. <laughs> <laughs> well, once again, we're talking with the guys from the Pro Audio Suite. If you have a question for them, because I mean, I got lots of questions. I could talk all night, which I've been known to do. Uh, but if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room, whether you're watching on Facebook or you're watching on uh, YouTube, because we do the show live, because we want you guys talking to us and letting us know what uh, what's on your mind and what you need uh, to uh, make your voiceover practice better, especially from an audio point of view. Anyway, yeah. we're going to take a quick break right now, and we'll be right back with the guys from the Pro Audio Suite right after these incredibly important messages. Don't go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. 
Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Inflated prices, not at voiceoveressentials.com. Despite the nationwide inflation rate of over 8%, VoiceOver Essentials refuses to raise prices. In fact, they refuse to even say the I word. Their inventory is large on all their products, and they purchase them before the current economic conditions. It's simply wrong to increase profit, as many retailers are doing right now. So Harlan and company promise not to raise their prices during difficult times for everyone. They'll stay the course, steady and sure, flat and firm, solid and steadfast. Okay, enough. You get the point. Unfortunately, they're under the same inflationary pressures as everyone else, and they'll need to restock in the not-so-distant future. No doubt, they'll be sticker shock for them and you. So, right now is the time to order that Portabooth Pro or VO1A voiceover microphone and their VO2.0 headphones. Fight inflation at voiceoveressentials.com. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV. Do you think? Hey, we're right. back here at yeah. Voice Upper Body Shop. We're with the Pro Audio Suite. And again, if you've got a question, if these guys know the answer, whether it's the right one or not, we'll, we we'll have to decide <laughs> later on. But uh, if, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room, whether you're on Facebook Live or watching us on YouTube or watching the smoke signals come over the top of the hill. Uh, anyway, just put them in there and we can get uh, those questions to these guys. Uh, I, I have one question I wanted to throw you guys. Because this is something that comes up an awful lot. When I'm talking to my clients and, and helping them with their audio, they're all like, I want to sound warm. What Put on a coat. Just, yeah. it's, it's, it's usually what I tell them. You know, yes. Sometimes they're like, what do I do about the bird sounds outside? I said, a shotgun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You've been yes. to Italy, haven't you? I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when somebody says warm, and we know that everybody hears differently, and certain sounds are, you know, people say, I have a buzz. And you listen, no, it's a hum. And I'm like, they'll say, I have a hum. No, it's a buzz. What do people mean by warm? And is that something that people should achieve? I, I, do you want me to have a crack at this one? Well, You've got the warmest to, voice here. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't sound like you have to work too <laughs> hard at it. Well, yeah. I think um, the key is, uh, apart from the frog in the throat, <clears throat> excuse me. Ribbit. I think, uh, exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me. COVID. I think the warmth <laughs> thing is either you've either got it or you haven't, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, 
each voice has its own signature and some sound warmer than other voices, I guess. But um, if you've got the prerequisite to have a warm voice, stop projecting so much and cuddle into the microphone and get warm. <laughs> what does having a warm sounding voice mean? I don't yeah. know. It's, it's, well, it's another know. one of those. It's another one of those. You know, could mean anything. Sort of. It's like it, it implies a certain softness, but still yeah. size, like big and soft. I would say. Yeah. But it's. But have you it's ever bizarre had that, when uh, we start using these words like for audio because they're all like touchy feely words and. Yeah, and, but have you ever had the one with the colours? I mean, I haven't heard it for a while, but it used to go like, um, just you know, when you can you. Just think it's kind of brown. Can you think brown? Yeah, shit. I, <laughs> I've never heard me. Like, like make it sound more purple is like the the joke. Yeah, a little more blue yeah. than purple. I've heard that. Yeah. Before, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, bright and dark, that makes sense. You know, if you're yeah. just, yeah. it's just yeah, like up up the scale, down the scale is all it is. I mean, you could, it doesn't have to be bright and dark, but. No. Um, Do you have to take your Pantone colors with you? And you know, it's like, oh, which well, yeah, shade? Like well, it's, it's yeah, funny yeah, because yeah. you're talking about Pantone colors, but really it's like all these different words. They, mm -hmm. you know, essy and edgy and boomy, and, and they all have different kind of spots in the frequency range generally that people agree on, and yeah. it's probably pretty wide. But certain words you would def definitely at least agree are like, say, 1k and below and those would be like boomy and muffy or whatever it sounds like an uh, uh pro audio suite episode waiting to happen where we yeah. literally <laughs> yeah, this is where we go. sit and talk for 45 minutes about how <laughs> shit to no one cares about clearly people do care about it because they keep hearing it i want to sound <laughs> yeah. this way i want to sound that way i'm like well you sound the way you are i think you, yeah i think that's, that's right thing. I, I think you've yeah. got to you've got to deal with your voice is what your voice is um you know like I, how many times i hear voiceover artists making their own voiceover demos or something like that and and they obviously decide that they they want to sound a bit more warm or a bit more thick or whatever term you want to put on it and all they do is they just they grab you know, something down around 100, 150 hertz and they just wind the hell out of it and, and just put all yeah. this, this, this bottom end that's not really there into their voice and, and stuff like that. And it's just, it's, it's uh, coming back to what we were talking about before, it's not natural. No. Um, it's not normally there. Don't, don't try and make it there. Your voice is your voice. It's, Unfortunately, it's Unfortunately, you're stuck with it. Yeah. What, yeah. what you start with, if it's music or voiceover, it's like, how do I sound this way or that way? It's like, well, sound that way. That's the first thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah. all the EQ, like, it's all meant for subtle, very refined changes. And if you're using it for extreme stuff, then you're fixing something or trying to force it into a place that it doesn't want to be. Mm -hmm. But ideally, you know, like, you're doing this with your voice. You are projecting in, certain, in a certain way. You're talking softly. And that's all part of the sound of it. And that's immediately where warm or dark or whatever comes from to start with and then i, I think yeah. a good example is um is nancy cartwright you know you think about her like like she couldn't play bart if she sounded like andrew oh, no. it'd be yeah. a different kind of bar <laughs> she, sure. she, she could just like do that you know mid-rangey I mean? thing man. like you i know? don't know <laughs> it's, it's 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 just your voice is your voice and yes you can put your push your voice to different places but you can still only push it to places that it's it's able to go right um yeah you know, it's 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 it's, it's like accents to me. I always find that interesting. Um, I mean, I, I know that uh, Matt Cowrick is is very good at accents. In fact, he's you know he's just a freak in that department. But sometimes, you know, people say, "Well, why don't you uh, why don't you do an American voiceover and stuff like that?" It's like, why would I? How many other There's American other better, voiceovers? Yeah. Are? There's so many. Why would I compete? It's ridiculous. Yeah, right. So, yeah, know, so stick can to I ask what, you a question? You Have you got your top button done up? I, I do just have noticed. Button, no. That's very formal of you. I mean, it's a is polo it? shirt. It's, it's it, very English of me. Would, would it be legit English? for a voiceover it's a person? Back to my I sort of say, days shall we go for some gin and polo? <laughs> 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 just don't ask Prince Andrew for God's sake. Otherwise, you would be well, bags we got, of M&Ms. We got so, some so. questions from our our vast oh. worldwide audience, and oh, we're wondering if you guys want to. Uh, sure, some I George. George will answer the first question. I've been this part all night. Yeah, I reckon George. you should do it, uh, Dan. You should actually get the, just pull a question up. Don't look at it, 
and just pick a name of any of us, and it will probably be the wrong question just, for the, 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 just the person. print it, I'm write it backwards, and then stick it on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll answer the question, and then you'll have to guess what the question was. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Oh, my God. This That's is turning game, into our like show. Yeah. <laughs> yes, All right. sorry. All right. George gets the first question, and he can uh, address oh, it to whoever he wishes. The first one uh, in the audience uh, from Rob Ryder, who's on YouTube watching, um, in, in from Cincinnati. <laughs> Um, I've been told that the normal noise floor in a quiet home is about minus 70 dB. If a booth has a noise floor of minus 60 dB or better, why do we need room tone at all? Like for audiobooks. How about, uh, Robert, you take this one. Oh God, I'm lost. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, yeah, pay attention. if... If if the noise floor of a house is lower than your booth, why do you need room tone for um it I mean I would call it booth tone. You just because it's if if you're cutting everything and you and you edit like between one word and another word, you're going to hear the silence and your brain whoever the listener is will feel the absence of whatever it is in the background. So you want to bridge that across with your edits. Even if you're cutting out breaths, you might even just want some silence there because if not, you'll feel that complete cliff down. Um, anybody on headphones will especially notice this stuff because then it's not blending with whatever room tone is existing with the speakers that they're listening in already. So if you're on headphones, it's like now you're fighting against zero. There's no place to hide. You can hear your edits, put some booth tone or some room tone in between things, and it just makes life way easier if not you have to have such an incredibly clean setup that um it's really hard to achieve and you have to make no noises if you're move you know like in between words if you somehow move your arm and there's a sound and you have to get out of it again you're going to hear these things be cut in and out um sound gated and whatnot so yeah i mean a normal noise for in a quiet room minus 70 db i, I don't i don't i don't know where that spec comes from I, that's Robin. if you're living in a say, bunker I I, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's probably i mean if yeah if you have a quiet home in in, in an in an urban suburban or or whatever environment you could probably get that low the problem is a lot of us are in urban environments and we never get close to that level of a room tone in a quiet home and then people go inside a booth thinking it's going to be quieter and it might be all the way down to 150 hertz quieter but from 150 or below it sometimes is louder because yeah. that room is a resonating chamber and now it makes everything yeah. louder in those lower frequencies. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're all fighting against different battles in terms of room tone noise levels. Yeah. yeah. And, and the other thing also to remember is, is, you know, it, it, it absolutely when the audio is raw, um, you're probably not going to notice it so much, but once you start processing, once you start yeah. EQing and compressing and all that sort of stuff, you actually are bringing that noise up a touch, so it does become more noticeable. And it a is compressor important. will just bring all your edits out. You'll that's yeah. right. totally yeah. And, and you know, unless you know, unless you you sort of you know go in and do a whole bunch of heaps of heap of noise reduction stuff, um, your brain will pick up as exactly as Robert's saying. Yeah, you do, certainly you do will pick up silence. Yeah. Yeah, you do want something just to fill those gaps. So. Um, I usually, yeah, I've, I've actually got a file sitting there when I edit, which is actually just the the noise of the booth, which I've captured. Yeah. And I just, I just cut a piece, and when I have to take something out, like yeah. a breath or whatever, I just drop it in. That's it's, how I it's, do it. It's bizarre not to take this into a pro audio suite thing, but adding noise in a sense adds resolution to things, yeah. um, which is what's called dither. But it can, it gives a nice. The easiest way to explain it is it gives a nice infinity for like for your voice to go or whatever it is that you're listening to for it to fade away into. So you can't tell when it went away. And if, if you don't have that, then it's a lot harder to, um, yeah. kind well, of give a, a sense of voiceover artists would also yeah. probably be horrified to know that one of the first things you reach for when you're processing voices these days is a bit of distortion. <laughs> Just to, yes, that's right. Just to give it a bit of crack and crunch and 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 pop. Yeah. So um, yeah. you know, it, it's um, it does have its place. Now yeah. here's a question. Also, when yeah. you uh, if you've got your mic set, like you've got, if you've got a multi-pattern microphone, depending on what pattern you select, when you cut at the end of a word, I know this. It's you get a click. What pattern is that? We talked about this only a couple of weeks ago. Any any pattern that lets more low end through. Basically, okay. because that click is going to mainly come from leaving a waveform. The low end tends to be more 
susceptible to the cut happening when it's way at the bottom of the you know like the waveform moving up and down relative to zero and so if you cut there on the bottom and the worst case scenario is the next instant is a cut on the top physically there's no way sound instantly jumps up like that and you get a click so okay. something that has a lot of low end um but i remember that i used to um you know in our in our booth at 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 a studio i worked at we had a crt tv and one of the engineers just didn't care that that thing was on like kicking out like 14k constantly <laughs> and he just didn't hear it didn't care about it whatever um but the funny thing is like you would scrub and you'd scrub down you know, like and then that super high frequency noise would come down into like some other audio frequency and it would just be maddening when you're editing cuz it'd be like You'd go into scrub, you'd be like, and you'd hear it constantly because it's like this 14K signal being pitch shifted yeah, <laughs> as, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. as you scrub. Yeah. Well. We got a question here from Linda Graves uh, who says, and this, this is one I ask all the time because it's like, why are you doing this? What does a $1,000 interface like a Universal Apollo Twin Duo give you? that the 150 to 200 dollars interfaces do aside from the fact that you can use all those plugins um you have less dollars to worry about yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah. um the the apollo's got a pretty decent preamp um and so some of those like 100 dollar 150 dollar they're going to have a preamp that doesn't quite give you as like they might go up to a good example is like a road ai1 it only goes up to like 50 decibels of boost um and so maybe if you're really soft-spoken or doing some, some asmr or something you could use the extra gain before the mic preamp gets noisy there's a hell of a lot of internal routing and other capabilities that the apollo has for dealing with latency but in the end if all you need is a mic in and a headphone out and you're trying to look for simplicity the most the apollo offers you i think is a uh, a good mic preamp and a good headphone preamp. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually like the um the SSL two, which yeah. is uh the interface a lot of that people I like use. that one, yeah. yeah. I've been hearing that. Well it's got plenty of gain. That was the thing, because Robert and I were doing um we're actually shooting a video for Source Elements, as it was. And uh I was using the AI one and my daughter was doing the voice and it just didn't have enough gain for what we were trying That's to right. achieve. I mean, we cra it was cranked, but we, we got through it, but it, it wasn't ideal. And uh, so Robert and I afterwards started talking about uh, getting another interface with more gain, and we scoured around and um, found the SSL2. So I bought one, and that I think that's got about 60... 65 or 60. 60 yeah, 62, yeah. 65, whatever it is, yeah. The Rode, I think, has like 45, I think. And I think some of the other like less expensive interfaces are like 50 and 55. The Rode was honestly especially low. Um, it's not bad. It doesn't, but it, the road doesn't seem to go into like crazy noise. Some of them that go up to whatever eighty and sixty or whatever. When when they do get up there, they're just kicking a lot of noise anyway. So it's kind of yeah. a useless range. Yeah, yeah and interesting that road would put that out with only fifty dB a gain because the roads generally are somewhat lower output. But uh, I think the reason they did it uh, with that because it was a kit, and then it it came with the you could buy well, the it with the kit, but as it came with the yeah. NT yeah. one one yeah, and the NT yeah. one has a a huge amount of gain. It's incredibly quiet, so I think as a pair with the AI one and the NT one, it worked really well. It's when you start sticking other things. You, you put a AI dynamic one. mic on that, like put an yeah, SM seven with the yeah. AI one, and you're in pain. You're in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. George, you got Jeff Holman's question. I'll do that. I just wanted to. There was yeah, a follow-up from Rob. He said, oh, I'm sorry I got some of the stuff backwards. I actually meant that the noise level in um, my house is actually l louder than the noise level in my booth. And I think what he's, I think it's a semantical thing. He's asking about room tone again. Mm -hmm. And room tone is just a generic term for the sound of an open microphone in a space. Right. Without you yeah. talking, yeah. Right. Yeah. So every room has a different room tone because it's unique to that space. That's what we're really referring to. So, yeah, your booth might have a higher, should have a lower, your booth should have a lower room <laughs> tone than yeah. your house. You would hope. Yeah, yeah. 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 otherwise yeah. you wasted a lot of money. If it but doesn't, yeah, you're in yeah. trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's definitely true. Um, Jeff Holman asks, he's our very own chat room mod, 
Um, oh. What's your feeling on using pre-processing to audio requested to be audio without processing? Like no. sending in an audition with high pass filter activated on your revelator when you're not doing post processing technically. So yeah, we've talked I, about this. I don't I don't call a high pass filter. I'll, I'll pass that one off as not processing. Like yeah. you're you're allowed to use a high pass filter as long as it's not too high. Everything else, don't touch it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think we talked about this a couple of episodes ago. For me, it comes we down did. to for me it comes down to do what you have to do. And, but do it for a reason. So have a result in mind. Don't blindly reach for a, a, a high pass filter, you know, if you don't know what it's going to do or why you need it. Um, leave it alone. If, if there's nothing sonically that strikes you that makes you go, you know, this could be a little odd, um, don't, don't do it. Um, yeah. The, how, how, about, how about this for an answer? <laughs> if you have a problem that you know about, you have two choices, and that is to just let the other engineer deal with it, or you try to get rid of it. And the whole question is, can you get rid of it better than the engineer? Can you get rid of it without tying their hands in any way that they might go, you know what, I just didn't care about that noise at all. I didn't care at all. And now this processing has done something. It's cut the end of a breath off if it's a gate or something. It does something weird that maybe in some, for some reason is needed. But if you're absolutely sure that you can solve the problem for the engineer, you are doing them a favor. You're saving them time. Great. Um, the problem is that that's not guaranteed to be what they want. And so the other aspect I would say is if you can do something with your voice that you cannot stand someone not doing for you, if you don't trust them, like just the opposite, if you don't trust the engineer to, you know, tweak it up and give a little bit of a brighter EQ and compress it a little bit, whatever, if, you, if you're not sure they're going to do that and you can't stand the possibility of your voice going out without that, then sure, do your stuff. And the weird thing is the awkward conversation you have to have with the engineer and whoever it is it's not really that awkward, but like, do you want processing or not? Do you like it like this or like that? Be really quick at being able to turn the stuff off. Um, if you're probably doing a session with me, I'm going to like, turn it off. But there might be engineers out there that do prefer it or they do want to work quick. Or classically, you're recording with, um, say, direct to a client and they're editing your voice straight in a video editor and you just know that they're never going to give it to an audio person and they're just going to spit it out of the video machine then you might want to get ahead of the game and try to process your voice for those things but um yeah you have to be confident in the processing you're doing and then you have to be willing to have the conversation with somebody to say hey i'm doing this do you want it or not or you can just not do it no one expects you to do it anyways and done <laughs> I think that there's the, the only issue I can see with that, though, is that we all have this weird perception of what we sound like. And uh, I guarantee if, you know, like a voice talent decides they're going to process their voice, they're going to make it sound like some something they want it to sound like, not what it should sound like. Yeah. And that that's an issue that, um, you know, once it's baked, you can't unbake it. So Correct. That's right. my advice, I would say... Don't don't touch. You can it. never go wrong with not touching it. <laughs> yeah, I mean the thing is, if your if your if your room is fun, like we talked about before, if your booth is good, you know, and the the everything that comes out of there sounds natural, as we've talked about, you know, sonically fine, then even if they do stick it in there raw, it's not perfect. But you kind of go, well, you know, it's better than me butchering it or whatever, you know. So just I think leave that's it. That's the thing. I think that's the thing, and and I don't, I really don't want to sound arrogant here, but, but interestingly, too late, too late. Yes, Robert. I know exactly what an asshole that Robbo is. <laughs> it's Typical your Aussie, head up his ass. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would suggest to you that you know, I guess you know, given thirty five years here, Robert, however many years behind the console, an audio engineer is going to know what they want to do with your bad audio better than you. You know what I mean? And, or they're going to want to do it their own way. They're going to go, well, you know, I don't like this, so I'm going to process this way. But if you give it to them and you've already had a hack at it, you, what you do is you push them into a corner of what they, they're able to do to get the result they want. So, yeah, especially with compression yeah. and gating, you, you, you can barely yeah. undo that stuff, if at yep. all. That's right. Like, yeah, totally. But how many, how many guys, something. like Robbo, how many times have you listened to other audio engineers, and we're not going to name names, but you hear what they do, and it's like, that sounds like crap. 
What are they doing? <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, that, I that's mean, the point, though. They don't think it sounds like crap. You think it sounds right. like crap. You know. That's right. And they may listen to my stuff and go, well, that's rubbish too, and that's, that's yeah. all personal. But, but you yeah. know, at least it's, it's, as an audio engineer, they've been given the opportunity to make it crap if that's how they want it to sound, if, that, yeah. if that's the sound they want to make it sound. Um, it hasn't been, you know, it's not taken away at the beginning of the process because you've overcompressed your voice or you've gated so hard you've cut stuff off and now all of a sudden I'm pushed into this corner where I've got to spend... 45 minutes to an hour doing what I can to fix it for, for a, a, a still not perfect result. I mean, like like a situation like this, you're doing an ensemble record or it's supposed to be all this stuff recorded sort of in a, in a group and one person gives you this super highly compressed thing, which doesn't sound very room-like and conversational. So now you're like, great, I got to, to make everyone sound similar, I got to make them all sound like they're super compressed. That's right. And then you're like, well, okay, it works, and probably most people don't notice, but you're, you're thinking as an engineer, like, man, if I had it differently, I would have treated these voices like that, and it really would have sounded like they were all in a room. And, yeah. and you're just like, well, I had to take it in a different direction because one person went there. Now I have to take everything there, for example. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. gentlemen, uh, you, we, we've reached the end of this particular hour, but you're going to stick around, and we're going to do Tech Talk for next week, and if anybody's got a question for you, that they are like, what are these guys talking about? Uh, we can, <laughs> we can, we can get into that in our in our in our next hour. But anyway, uh, guys, thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet all of you. I mean, I know most of you guys, but it's always a pleasure to to talk with you. And thanks it's for being with us. It's a pleasure to meet you guys too. I haven't yeah. seen any of you. <laughs> I know. Oh, you know what some of these guys look like. <laughs> anyway, George and I'll be back to wrap things up right after this. Beautiful. You're still watching VLBS. <laughs> In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. It's time, yes it is, to do something I've never had to do before, and that is do a commercial for Source Elements in front of the co-founder of Source Connect and Source Elements, Robert Marshall. Uh, I don't know if he knows this, but I make it up every single time, and I do it twice twice a session and here we go uh source connect is an amazing tool for connecting your studio to others in the in the world of production and it's it's loved by so many producers for a couple reasons one it's been around a long time to a point where it's been i would i will say safely it's become a standard right it's become a standard staple of uh, voiceover recording uh production because it is just it's been around a long time Maybe later, uh, when we get into tech talk later, Robert can go a little bit more into Source Elements history and when and when Source Connect was developed. But it's been a while; it's been a minute, as the kids say. Um, so it's a, it's a well established tool. It also the producers are recording your audio directly into their timeline in whatever DAW they're using. Ninety five percent of the time, probably Pro Tools, and so it works in the workflow. It just flows into the way the producers work and allows a very efficient way of working. It also allows them to have a client or clients, and many times with big commercials, there's many clients, all listening in, either physically sitting in a studio or all dialed in from another system, and they're all listening to what you're doing in real time, giving notes, giving direction, listening to approval, and all of this is happening in real time because your audio goes right into the track. That is the key, and that's why it's such a hugely popular tool, and why as a voice actor, you probably should be, at the very least, 
highly familiar with it, if not owning a license. And if you want to do that, go to sourceelements.com. They have a brand new website, by the way, to go check it out, um, get familiar and get yourself a trial license so you can start learning how to use it. And you'll find out very quickly whether your studio is ready for Source Connect when you start testing it. We can help you if you're not, so don't worry about that. Dan and I and the team at Source Elements as well will love to give you a little bit of advice to get your studio up to par. But anyway, there you go. Thank you, Source Elements. Thank you, Robert. And thank you, Rebecca, for sponsoring us for so long. We really appreciate it. And let's get back to the rest of the show right after this. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. And we're back, and uh, we're going to rack it up for Tech Talk. We're going to have the, uh, the Pro Audio Suite guys with us. Should make your tech update rather interesting. See what they think about some of the weird exactly. stuff, that, stuff that you find. Anyway, uh, next week on this very show, we will have Tech Talk number 82. Believe it or don't, it just goes on and on. There's just so much to talk about. Tech never, never stops. It just It just becomes the next tech. Anyway, uh, let's see here. We have our donors of the week, like Jonathan Grant. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Tom Pinto. Shelly Avellino. George Whittam Sr. That's right. Brian yeah. Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Greg Thomas. A Dr. Voice. Antland Productions, A Uncle Roy. Shauna Pennington Baird. Martha Kahn. Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Dana Birdsall, and Sandra Manweller. If you want to make a donation to the show to keep the amazing technical quality that we have achieved over the last 11 years, if you go to our homepage, uh, VOBS.TV, there's a button that says, Donate Now. You can give us a buck. You can give us a buck a month. You can give us 10 bucks a month. You can be like some people who give us 500 bucks a month. <laughs> well done. Yeah, thank you. I <laughs> <laughs> that, that, thought that would be worth it. Anyway, uh, that's important. Also, you can join our mailing list there and you'll get a, a an update of what we're going to be doing this week. So you know that you have to tune in to catch that stuff. Uh, we also need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. JMC demos and worldvoices.org, the industry association of freelance voice talent. Yes, Welcome. I'm the president, but I'm also a member. Uh, well, and I got to slip in my little promotion. It's amazing it. how many people don't use this coupon code. You guys are crazy. Leaving money on 20% off any service at George the dot tech. Uh, that's a booked or booked service, scheduled service, or a webinar. Uh, if you use VOBS fan 2022, yeah, 20% off. All right. Very good. Uh, we need to thank Jeff Holman for doing a great job in the chat room, getting those questions in there, but he's not done yet. We still got to do tech talk. And of course, Sumerlino for coming home in hot weather, riding her bike back from the airport and doing the amazing stuff that she does as our technical director. So we thank her for that. And of course, Lee Penny, just for being Lee Penny. Anyway, that's going to do it for this show, and we're going to re-rack it for Tech Talk. If you got questions, put them in the chat room. Anyway, you know, this isn't an easy business. There's so much you got to know, but as long as your audio sounds good. It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. See you in a bit. <laughs>